Hey guys, it's Lana Ezell here, the lead developer on Code Igniter 4. And I just wanted to go over tonight one of the things that I see the most confusion with old time Code Igniter developers uh, getting into the new version of Code Igniter. And that is, it seems to be all based around namespaces. All right, because I know previous versions of Code Igniter did not use namespaces at all. And unless you used Composer with it, you were not really familiar with it, probably, unless you ventured out to other frameworks. So today let's look at uh, namespaces. First of all, what are they? Okay, namespaces allow you to have two classes of the same name, more or less. Um, let's say you've got, in, th in this case, autoload. This is a class called autoload. Autoload is a fairly common term, right? And so what if, the, in this case, the framework has a class called um, autoload somewhere that it needs, and then you're developing an application and you want to do something that's also called autoload. Well, without any kind of name, a any kind of way to tell it apart, you're going to hit collisions because you cannot have two classes of the same name. The, you know, the system won't know which one to do, right? And so namespaces allow you to give it a space where those names can live in. All right, in this case, the namespace is config. All right, and so this is this full file name is actually config slash um, autoload. That's what this class name is, okay? And why that's important is because we can have a config autoload here, and then you can have a framework slash autoload. And those have the same base class name, this part right here. But they have they live in a different namespace, okay? So that's all namespaces are. They allow you to have the same class names in different areas. Uh, you can ship modules that have it. You can have your app have it. Uh, the framework can have it. It can be, you know, you can have 15 different classes of the same name. As long as they're in a different namespace, you can find it. Okay. Why is this important? Well, especially with the advent uh, in the PHP world of Composer, a lot of people think of it primarily for its package management. One of the big things Composer really did for us was to give us a consistent way. It was one of the first big implementations, anyway, of a consistent way of locating those classes based on the namespace. Okay, as far as PHP is concerned itself, it doesn't care where these files live, right? It doesn't have to be any rhyme or reason. Uh, they'll each be in their own namespace, they'll each be in their own file. PHP will be fine. But with Composer and other autoloaders now, they take those namespaces and map those to a location on the hard drive so that you can find them easily. So you can say, uh, I want a new autoload file and it will know which one to grab and where to go find it so that it can fire up an instant instance for you and um, put you on your way, all right? That is the basics of namespaces. They tell you where to go. Okay, now how do you call them? Well, at the, or how do you use them? Well, at the top of your file, you want to say what namespace it lives in. In this case, uh, in Code Editor 4, the, the config uh, folder is a slightly different beast than a lot of the other stuff. But for now, just say, let's just look at this. Okay, this is namespace config. It's in the config folder. Okay, we'll look at the rest of it here in just a second. That tells it if it needs to look for this file, it comes to the config folder because this namespace maps to this directory here, and then look within this file for the rest of the uh, for the autoload. Oops, sorry, for the autoload class. All right, easy as that. That's all it does. Now let's take a look here. The app namespace. If we scroll down here in our autoload file, it actually tells us how to find those. Okay, it, it says the app namespace here goes to app path, which for Code Igniter 4, the app path points to our app folder here. So any class under this folder can be found by mapping it with a namespace corresponding to the folders that it's in. So for controllers, our base controller here would have a namespace of app controllers. Let's check that if that's true namespace app controllers. That's absolutely right. And so now if you needed a, a uh, admin controller here, it would have app controllers admin because the folder structure is app controllers admin. So you've always got to make sure that when you create new controllers, this is one of the biggest places I see this on the forums, when you create new folders, um, that you make sure to change your namespace to use that. Okay, so now what if you want to use a class? This is a perfect example. If you want to use a class, you've got to call out the entire thing, right? 
So if you didn't have this use statement up here, what you'd have to do is you'd have to give it what they call the fully qualified name here. And that's a lot of typing a lot of times. So we don't want to do that all the time, right? So instead what we do is we say at the top of the file, we say, hey, I want to use this file, right? And so at any place that we say just the name, it's going to have that. Or it's going to look up here and know where to find that file and what namespace to look under, right? So now what if you've got two of them of the same name? Well, okay. Um, let's say this is system. Obviously this doesn't exist, but just go with me here. So this is another file of the same name um, that we want to be able to use in this file. Well, obviously we can't tell it to use the same thing because we run the same problem, right? We can't just call it admin controller down here because it won't know which one of these two to pick. So at that point, you can say, I need to reference this file as a different name, as base controller maybe. And now any place that you want to use this particular class, instead of typing the whole fully qualified name, you can just type base controller. So you could say C equals new base controller. And there you go. It would know to find it up at this location, which it's complaining because it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> so we'll get out of there. No, uh, right. got us back to normal here. All right, so namespaces, how to look for them, how to call them up here. We've covered all that. So the big key to remember here is it all must map to the folder name. Okay, so let's say you want to do modules. In this case, um, I've actually, this is some forum software that I've started creating uh, that I've put on pause for a little bit while I'm working on an actual personal project, um, but I will get back to this. Uh, but we're going to use this as an example, all right? So in this case, I wanted to have everything sorted by the domain. Um, and, you know, the forums, the menus, parsers, stuff like that. And so I put them all under the modules folder here. And so everything could be referenced under app modules, forums, config, routes. That gets to be pretty, you know, it gets to be a lot of typing long names. So you don't want to necessarily do that. I would much rather have, um, I used to have a company, I guess I still do, called New Myth Media. Um, I work for a, a different company now for my day job. But so I have a tendency to use Myth as my core namespace. So Myth Forums, I wanted to be able to reference everything here under my name, basically. All right, and so the way you do that is you come up here under your config, app config autoload file, where we looked before. And as you can see, I'm saying, hey, this namespace can be found at this location. So app path, which is right there, modules, forms. So that's where that namespace is. Now, why would I do that? Why would I get that specific? Because it would work just fine if we kept it with app and didn't add these. I mean, obviously, other than me wanting to use that as my um, my, my base, um, why would I want to use that? Because, I, like I said, I could use app, modules, forums, controllers for all this, and it would work just fine. Because, remember, anything under where this namespace is called out, which is right here, um, will be mapped by its folder name. And so it would be able to find all these just, just fine. Well, here's what Code Editor 4 adds for you. Okay, it's got some special sauce under the hood that will take um, and do auto location of, of things like your config files, especially for like routes. Those are automatically included with all your other routes. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. There's there's a number of items that it will automatically detect for you. Things like using the um, the model helper will automatically look within the models directory of any of your your PSR or PS4 namespace here, and so that's why. I mean, okay, let me back up a little bit. I feel like I'm not explaining this great. Right? So let me just start it again. I, one of the big problems I see is people trying to take a module like this and make it work and make it files, and they're running into the problem that files cannot be found. All right. And here's what happens a lot of times, is they'll be tempted to say, I want all my modules. Right here, let's just make a new one so I don't completely mess this up. I want a modules folder, right? So we're just going to make a modules a namespace there. So there we go. That works. We have our modules namespace. It points to here. Great. We can 
we can find everything. It works good. But now they're trying to pull up a config file in here. Um, like maybe by doing it like, um, you know, pull up an instance of config wrapped. This is a horrible example, but thinking that it would automatically find this file here. Unfortunately, due to the way uh, Code Igniter is architected, to keep performance high, it does not uh, view in you know multiple nested folders like this to find our typical config controller models um, folders like that when it's doing its automatic searching of stuff. It will only do one level deep. Okay, so in other words, if you're in modules, it's going to look for any of your config files in your modules config. That's not what we want here. We want modules forums config because we might have um, our menus might have something different, our parsers might have something different, users might have other config files, which they do here. And so in order to make it find those, we have to come up here and do it this way, where it's more specific to the individual module itself. Okay. Now, if you don't want to take advantage of some of those extra features like that, you're more than welcome to just do it like that. And then just be more explicit whenever you call everything. That works perfectly well. But if you want to take advantage of some of the other stuff that CodeNetter provides, you're going to have to name them more specific here, and then have your standard folders uh, underneath. And by standard folders, what I'm talking about is stuff like, you know, that you'd find under the app folder. So think of these as mini applications, basically. Uh, um, so with that, it's going to look for stuff like your config folder. Um, it's going to look for filters, helpers, languages, models, views, all this kind of stuff. It will be able to find if you put it here. Okay, so that's why you want to make sure that you, you call out your modules, your um, packages, a little bit more specific than you think you might need to. And I, I really hope that clarifies it for a lot of people because it seems to be some, one of the most common issues I see. Some of the other things that we've done around namespacing. In PHP, namespacing only applies to classes, right? It does not apply to helpers. It does not apply, not helpers, but for those of you familiar, which I'm assuming most of you are, a helper is just a file with functions in it. You know, there's no classes in it, it's just straight functions. PHP's namespacing does some stuff with that, but none of the honor loaders will locate um, functional files. And in, in this case, also stuff like view files, right? In Code Editor 4, we've expanded the typical autoloader process to be able to actually find views by namespace, to be able to find helpers by namespace. Um, I think those are the main ones that are not normal. Seems like there's one other one I can't think of off the top of my head. Though. If I remember before the end of it, I'll come back and edit it in, hopefully. Um, but so you can actually say, I, I need a view. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, hey, I need a view, but I want it to come from this specific module. All right. So let's say I want to come down to modules, forum. Oh, I don't have any views in any of these, do I? Okay, so I can't show them, but let's pretend like we had, well, I'm in the forums controller here. Let's pretend like we had a view folder here, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Tell you what, we're just ignoring that. We're just going to keep talking here, right? Let's pretend that we have a views folder here. And in that views folder, we have a file called list, and that'll list all of our forums. So how would we reference that? How would we say, don't look in your standard views location for a thing called, um, for a view called list. We don't want it to do that. Instead, we want to look up here in our forums thing. So to tell it that, we can actually namespace our view. So we could say, I need it in myth forums views, and then your view file. Okay, and that would look in, the, in your typical namespace, myth forums, which would bring us to here, in our views directory, and then it would look for the list file. Okay, like I said, that, that's not something that we would find uh, typically with Composer or any um, other ones provided by most frameworks. I don't believe. Uh, but that's something that we've done to try and make that a little bit easier, a little bit more flexible for you, especially when we're writing packages and stuff. 
And so that, guys, is his nut, uh, is namespace is in a nutshell. How we use it in Code Igniter, how you can use it within your modules. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I will try to answer them either in the comments or in another uh, video for you guys. Um, if you've got other topics you'd like to see me cover, please, especially, especially with basics. Right now I'm really focusing on basics here on YouTube. And if you've got any of the basic questions that you'd like me to cover, let me know and I will cover those as soon as I can. Uh, no promises on timeline right now because I'm absolutely slammed with work and personal project and of course coding down itself and you know maybe working on a book you know all this kind of stuff. I have a few things going on and so they're, they're obviously going slower than I would like. But that that happens, right? Even with a global pandemic can't keep me down. <laughs> that sounds crazy. A anyway, so pretend I didn't say that. Anyway, I hope you guys are, speaking of that pandemic, I hope you guys are doing okay and, and that you're surviving and, and maybe even thriving in this time i know it's a horrible time for all of us um but i hope you guys are doing okay i really do again if you got any questions leave it in the comments stay safe be healthy i'll see you guys next time bye